How's it going? Fox again for Sound Design Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a deep house bass with Absinthe 5. There is two layers to this uh, bass actually. The, t the bottom layer which uh, takes care of the lower end of the sound is made with Absinthe 5. And then the other patch which takes care of sort of the mids to high mids and highs is done with FF FM8. I will be doing a tutorial in a couple of days to show you how to make the FM8 one. Which, they're, b they're pretty versatile patches, patches. They can both pretty much do the bass on their own. But the way I've got the FM8 one EQ'd, if you see here, I've moved everything out of the way from 100 hertz down. So the low end is really dealt by Absinthe because it's got a, uh, all the three oscillators are two octaves down. So as you can imagine, it's real, a real, real deep patch. But yeah, for now, I'll show you both the layers and some, a little beat that I made all in one so you can get the gist of what we're trying to get to. Bass. So yeah, the the main bulk of this sound comes from three really simple uh, oscillators. I've just got a square reel, a sine, and a soothe small. As I say, analog sounding. Analog is uh, massive at the minute within the deep house scene. Everybody wants that that old sort of sound. So yeah, as I say, it's a real straightforward patch. Three basic oscillators. All of them have got a low pass filter. I've got a little bit of ring modulation on a couple of the filters. A bit of ring modulation on the main and a multi-tap effect just to give it a bit of delay feel so yeah we will uh, now I'll uh, just mute the drums which I have done so it's just the absinthe on its own and I'll create a new instance of absinthe so yeah oscillator A I change to double and I change it to a square reel I moved it down two octaves to minus 24 and then I just pulled it down slightly to so it was 23.990 just to offset it slightly and the phase was 0 0.08 so yeah oscillator A on its own so the filter I chose for this was a low pass filter as I say it's a low pass for all of them I've done the cut off of this right down to 2300 hertz so this is the this and the sine wave are dealing with the real low end of the sound. The feedback I set at 1. And the volume for the feedback I set at 4.8. The feedback I chose for this filter was a ring modulation. As I say, I use a ring modulation on the master as well. It's good if you're using distortion on a filter to try and keep it the same as what you do on the master if you use it. helps cre uh, create a bit of consistency in the sound. So yeah, ring mod, I kept it on sine. The cutoff was 13,300, sorry, and I kept the mix at one. So yeah, with the filter on. In the other mod slot, I used another filter for this as well. Just to hone in on the lower part again, I used a bandpass filter, which is BPF. I pulled the cutoff right down again to 408 to hone in right on the real subby part of the sound. Kept the cue at 1 and the decibels at naught. So yeah, that's it for oscillator A. Really straightforward. I'll set all the three of the envelopes up now for oscillator A, B and C as we use all three. All three of them were pretty much the same. I just kept it nice and plucky. Just back the attack off slightly on all three, just to stop any clicking at the start of the sound. I pulled the sustain level all the way down so it was just a decay and release. Pull the decay down on all of them to just below one. And then pull the release back so there's nothing. But yeah, that's a free envelope set up, nice and straightforward. So we'll go on to oscillator B now. Oscillator B is the same, another analog sound in waveform, which is a sine wave. 
I did this to minus 24 as well, down two octaves, and the phase at 0.14. The unison I kept at 1, so I didn't need to change anything there. As I say, a low pass filter again for this. The cutoff as this was 2400. Pretty much the same sort of area as what we had uh, the first one. The feedback is 0.38. The volume for this is 13.5. The feedback again, I just kept this on normal actually, I didn't change this to ring rod, but that's fine. So yeah, two oscillators in now. I just gave all three of those a tiny little bit of release just to make sure there was no clicking. Uh, you could hear a little bit of click because the notes are ending too sharply and they're overlapping slightly. So yeah, oscillator three, another basic waveform. I changed this one to double, I wanted this one a little bit thicker, and this was a saw smooth. Transpose this down, minus 24, same as the rest, and I offset this up slightly to 24. Zero zero eight zero zero seven something like that, and the phase at zero point one four again. And say so modern unison for this, I didn't do anything with, just kept it as standard, nice and simple. Uh, low pass filter again, low pass two. The cut off for this one is a little bit higher, five thousand eight hundred hertz. The feedback was at zero point five, and the decibel at zero point eight. I'll get there. The feedback, the feedback I use for this is a wave shaper. I thought it was ring mod, but obviously not. It's a wave shaper. I kept it on sign. The amount was a hundred, and the phase was set at one. So yeah, oscillator C. I'll set up another low pass filter on uh, the second mod box. A low pass two again. Cut off pretty much the same as this one. I had it at 5827. No feedback, no volume for the feedback. So, yeah. It's quite squelchy and dumpy at the minute, but I'm going to do um, some uh, envelopes now for these two filters. So, all three. Did I do it for all three filters? Let me just check. No, for filter A1 frequency and C1 fil frequency. So to do that for A1, if you right click on the frequency box, create a new envelope, that's filter A1 frequency. And then for C, say in this cutoff box here, right, create new envelope. Now, now I've got an envelope for the, fil for the filter frequency for A and C. So we'll set up A first. It's a lot like we had for the... Uh, Envelopes for the for the main oscillator is quite a snappy attack. Decay down to just about one again. A tiny little bit of sustain on this. Pull the release out to about in between one and a half and two. And for C. A lot snappier this one. Same again, nice snappy attack. A real short decay on this one. About 0.25. And just bow it outwards so you get that outwards curve. So pull the release right back to nothing. So with the two envelopes on the filter. So yeah, the wave shaper I used was a ring mod, as I said to start with. I kept it on sign again. I changed this to ratio and changed it to 0 0.5. It's just another way of saying down one octave, if you know your ratios with FM synthesis. Bit of ring mod. Did 
Just add some nice harmonics when you put a bit of ring modulation on the master. Be careful with your ratio though. If you go too high, it can really crunch up the sound, make it sound a bit iffy in my eyes. So yeah, the effect I used was a multi-tap, which is a delay. Click on the multi-tap. Uh, I had the master volume on full. I pushed the input for A up to about a third of the way and C to about two thirds of the way. I did a low pass filter on this multi-tap so I wanted it to be affecting sort of the mid to lows so I pulled it down to about 12,000 kept the high pass where it was, the wet where it was and the dry where it was I turned on the surround I don't think I did any rotation at all, no, I pushed the position to about 2 o'clock the spread about the same I changed the, no, on the second it was a 0.0 not one O, so quite a slow rotation, but it did did add a bit add a bit of movement to the sound. Tap one time was on 100. Tap two was on 48. Tap three I changed to 50. Control sensitivity 36 for that tap one. 53 for tap two. 54. For that, all the gains I changed down to, no actually, I kept the middle one on 6, I did the top one and the bottom one to minus 8.20, so the centre frequency one was a bit louder. Pan position I kept out, it was 10, 90 and 50, and the feedback I pulled down to 16, I didn't want it to feed back into itself too much. So yeah, this is the sound done now with the multi-tap on, so I'll play it through again. <laughs> Maybe just pull that wet down a bit. I weren't too happy with that. So you 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 you're constantly changing patches around when you use them in different situations. Probably sits better there at minus ten, ten point four. So yeah, now I'll play it through quickly with the FM eight one. So there you have it, a nice deep house bass with Absinthe 5, it's a real simple patch with this. Uh, Absinthe's quite an underestimated synth in my eyes, uh, I think the interface is a bit more complicated compared to some synths, so people ch tend to sh shy away from it and use other synths like Massive and that. But it's got a vast amount of different waveforms you can choose from, it's quite a versatile synth in my eyes, you can, you can do a lot of it in the right hands. So yeah, that's that patch anyway, the next one, I'll show you quickly, I'll solo this FM8 one so you can hear it. Oh, just go over the bit of processing I had quickly. Um, I told you I pulled the hides down on the Absinthe one just to make room for the FM8 one, which uh, taken ch c takes care of the higher ends of the sound. And on the, I've grouped the two together, and on the bus I've got a little bit of saturation, a bit of EQing just to get rid of a little problem frequency. I had a bit of phasing between the two patches together, and an SL comp just uh, binding the two sounds together. But yeah, this is the FM8 patch. I'll solo this and play this on its own. Quite a similar patch really, they both cover quite the same amount of the spectrum, that's why I just EQ'd this out of the way because I, I felt the absinthe one dealt with the lower ends a lot better with the, with the sine wave and the square wave. But yeah, I'll be going over this patch next time. Uh, again, it's really, really straightforward. All basic so uh, basic waveforms again. I've got a sine, a square, a sort no, two sines, a square, and a sawtooth. Nothing crazy with any modulation. Straight into the filter and straight out. 
and the effects are pretty straightforward as well. I've got a bit of EQ and an amp and a delay. But yeah, that's for the next one. So for now, I'd like to say thanks again for for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe. Uh, Facebook is uh, Sound Design Tutorials, as is Google Plus, and the YouTube page is www.youtube.com forward slash Mr N Fox 22. Okay, as always, thanks a lot. Cheers.